Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venomman20 here tonight. Last week I did my first ever Q&A video. You guys seem to enjoy it. I asked for 150 to 200 likes just to make sure you actually enjoyed the video in order to do another one. So I figured I'd do another one this weekend because you got 199 likes on that video. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for the good work. I'll go ahead and get a heliderm out on the table so you have something to look at and we'll go through all the questions that was left on that video. So let's go ahead and get started. So tonight I figured I would start out with a big beaded lizard on the table because he's a little bit easier to keep on the table than some of the Helas because the Helas can be a real pain in the butt sometimes. This guy's pretty chill. So I have a lot of questions to go through. Let's get started on that. I will apologize. I'm not the best reader, so bear with me on that. MB asks, would you please talk about the price of venomous snakes? I would love to know how much it costs between them. They vary a lot. Uh, I hate to actually talk about the price because some snakes cost a lot less than I think they should. Uh, let's say a monocle cobra could go for like $100. Do you really need a monocle cobra for $100? You might be able to afford it, but are you ready for that animal? Probably not. What's your reason for trying to have that animal? You know, are you trying to educate people or what? You know, I, I understand that, that this is a hobby to a degree. Um, it's a little sketchy. Now some snakes, like the black-headed Bushmasters, can go up to $5,000. So there's a lot of money in that. Um, at the same time, of course, the rarer the animal, the more it's worth. Uh, a lot in the pet trade, like let's say the albino ball python, first albino ball python, easily could have went for sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Um, if you find the first ever albino black mamba, it's probably not going to sell for as much because it's a very limited market. Who really needs a black mamba? Who is capable of handling a black mamba? Even if you breed 100 baby albino black mambas, it's gonna be a hard sell. So with that being said, you know, it might go for $5,000, maybe, maybe. But, you know, hard to tell. It all depends on the market. Brady Ray, how do you get into owning and learning the proper handling of venomous snakes? That's hard. The reason I say that's hard because I would normally say find a mentor, but I've seen some really crappy mentors out there. I've seen some people that just have no business teaching anybody anything about handling venomous snakes. So with that being said, uh, I think it would be better for you to learn on your own than to find a crappy mentor. Now there's some great people out there that can teach you more than you'll ever learn on your own. So it's kind of a touchy subject. Here soon I'm going to be working on some videos uh, explaining a little bit more in depth on how to do certain things, but we'll get into that at a later date. Rob Dumond, 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 hopefully I'm not murdering that too bad. The cages behind you, are they custom or are they purchased? I actually bought these from uh, Joe Danke Arboreal Cages. Uh, I do believe the St. Louis Zoo and maybe a few other zoos have some of these cages. So they're pretty decent quality. I like them. I actually did a video showcasing some of their some of their qualities on the uh, six viper update video. Um, I'll put a link down to the description. I tried to get his contact info, like an email address or something, so then I could kind of forward you guys over to him to ask questions or to buy the product, whatever. He hasn't got back with me with any contact info, so. I tried my best to give him a little bit of a shout out and he apparently doesn't want it. So great guy, just not sure. I, I guess he just doesn't want to sell cages. I'm not sure because I have so many people ask me that question. Maurice Walker, I'm probably not getting that right. I'm not exactly sure how to say the first uh, name. Sorry about that. Um, what is your favorite snake to catch in the wild? I honestly haven't caught all that many snakes in the wild. You know, I photograph some snakes. I come across some snakes. I, I just observe their natural behavior. I'm not really all for going out and catching them, but if that's what you mean, we caught black snakes and water snakes and, you know, cotton mouths. Nothing too crazy. My favorite snake I would love to catch in the wild that would just be like the end-all be-all would be the Gold's Tree Cobra. It's right up here on the list. I mean, it is the numero uno. It's an extremely rare snake. It's extremely fast, extremely toxic. Not much is known about them. They're from the worn, torn parts of Africa. So anyway, there's that. That's a cool snake. Is you Hillary has a couple questions. Uh, I'm really interested in the work you do with reptiles. Is your collection at your house or a facility? It's not really a facility. It's at my reptile building. Uh, so I, I kind of feel like if you uh, if you work with venomous reptiles, having them at your house might not be the best idea. And you can have locking cages, locking room. That's totally fine. 
But my opinion, if you have LeBron James off of a basketball court, he is LeBron. He's not LeBron James. He's not one of the best in the world at that point. He's just a normal human being. If you have a bunch of Cobras inside your living room, you walk into your living room expecting to watch the new Breaking Bad and you don't realize the Cobra's out or something, that's not good. When I walk into a venomous building, I'm in the mindset, I'm in a building full of venomous snakes. You know, I change from being normal Brandon, I'm going to the shopping center to buy me some lasagna, to it's game time. I'm on my game, I'm focused, I'm here to do what I need to do and to get out and go home safely. So therefore, you know, it's kind of catch-22. If that's all you have, you know, I would highly recommend having a venomous room where it's completely self-contained. You don't have to have any worry about anything getting out if it ever happens. You know, uh, God forbid there be a fire or an earthquake or, you know, it's, it's hard to tell what all could actually happen. But it wouldn't be good. This is also from Is You Hillary. Uh, do you work at a zoo or are you a zookeeper? I am not a zookeeper anymore. I retired from that line of work. I uh, now I'm just a private keeper who really wants to save some reptiles. Uh, there's some reasons behind that. I'll get into those at a later date. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, I'll get into that at a later date. Another question from the same person, uh, do you do education? I feel like this is education. Uh, you know, I, the biggest show I ever did do was with about 200 people in front of 200 people. And that was awesome, but at the same time, 200 people versus a video I put up last night getting 2,000 views. I'd much rather reach 2,000 people than 200. I do enjoy the fact that I can interact with the 200 a little bit closer, but at the same time, I'll just, I'll never reach those numbers in real life. You know, right now I'm at uh, 5.6 million views. I can't talk in front of 5.6 million people. It's not possible, you know? So uh, yeah, I feel like I do some educational stuff. Potato Salad asked me a question about his uh, monocle cobra. That's great. I love questions about reptiles. But the problem with questions on YouTube is a lot of times I miss questions. If you've noticed, I haven't been answering as many comments here lately. Uh, reason being because I've been uploading a lot more. It's just very hard for me to keep up. So if you truly have a question about your pet or some animal you work with or some animal you've seen, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Send me a message. I'll pretty much guaranteed to see that. I'm not guaranteed to see all the comments. Sorry about that. Had to put the beaded lizard away. He was just getting too rowdy. It's very hard for me to answer questions and keep up with him. Uh, I do not exist. Uh, said thank you for answering my question. Uh, do you have an Instagram account? Yes, uh, Venomman20, just like my YouTube and my Facebook. You can go on there. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of pictures of videos that are coming up that I haven't got uploaded yet. Uh, if you want to, if not, that's cool too, whatever. Rattlesnake bite? Uh, ask me, what is the grossest thing that you've ever had happen to you in regards to a reptile? Uh, while I was working at the zoo, I actually had a Mozambique spitting cobra poop inside the water dish. And he just, he filled it full of poop. He just made the grossest concoction of stew I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not going to reach inside of Mozambique spitting cobra's enclosure to grab that water dish. So I used my hemostats. I grabbed it with my hemostats. I pulled it back and I was carrying it because it was just covered. It was just so gross. He made such a mess. And I slipped out of the hemostats and it dropped. And you see it in slow motion. It's like, ah, and it hit the floor and right into my mouth. Just instantly just shot straight into, oh, it was so gross. Like it was just, didn't really even taste that bad, but it was just so gross. <laughs> just thinking about what it was, it just entered my mouth. I, I spit and gagged for a while and, uh, it was just so gross. So, so gross. That was just nasty. Igris? I think it's Igris. Maybe it's Igris. How much does it cost to feed your whole reptile collection? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I've never actually sat down and figured it up. I know I spend over $100 a week on rodents. I feed about every 10 to 14 days. Um, it's probably around $500 a month. We'll say $500 a month, but I'm not figuring in the meat that I feed the crocs, I'm not figuring. I know I feed more, or I pay more for the reptile food than I do my own food, and I love to eat. I'm kind of a fatty. So, uh, yeah, I, I, it's probably over $500 easily. Um, it, it costs some money for sure. Jordan Richardson, what part of Missouri are you from? Uh, you're actually from Columbia, Missouri, it says. Columbia, Missouri is cool. They have this really cool pet shop, uh, Columbia Pet Center, I think it's called, or something of the sort. 
really cool. They have the huge fire eel, awesome fish, a fly river turtle. There's some really cool stuff in there. I'll, I'll stop. I'm not paid to say that. They're just a really cool pet store. I actually go up around Hannibal, Missouri, which is just a small town on the river, on the Mississippi River. Uh, Mark Twain is famous for growing up in, in Hannibal, Missouri. It's just kind of a small town, but it's nice. Um, I no longer live there, no longer live in the area, but it was fun while I did. I grew up there pretty much my entire life, uh, besides also living in Kirksville, Missouri at one time. That's actually where I got into reptiles. But At Normal Plains, I do believe, is asked the question, would you ever breed your venomous lizard? Yes. Um, the beaded lizard I would really like to get babies from just because they're cool. Really like that species. But they, uh, they're too young right now, the beaded lizards are. That, that one that I had out here on the table is only a couple years old. So he'll get almost four foot long. So uh, he still has some growing to do. He's probably only about two foot now. Um, the uh, Gila monsters I hold sometimes. I like to breed those, those would be cool. Uh, you just gotta be careful. Those guys will rip each other apart. So it's very hard to make sure that everybody's happy and healthy during breeding. You've really got to watch them sit down, take the time, brew some coffee, and watch these guys breed. A little weird, but it's just what you got to do to make sure everybody stays safe. The Lunar actually asked quite a few questions, so we'll try to go through those real quick. Thank you for commenting. You comment on almost all my videos. I do appreciate it. Uh, first question, have you ever considered coming to Australia to check out? I'm guessing their venomous snakes is what he's talking about. I would love to come to Australia. That's the goal. Been thinking about it for quite some time. Going to have to quit the day job before I do that though. <laughs> I There's no way. I work like 50 hours a week, which really isn't that much. But to make it over there, I'd need a lot of vacation because the flight alone is like 14 hours, 15 hours. So yes, I do plan on coming to Australia. Just not yet. The YouTube's not there yet. So in time. So I would love to meet Nick from Wicked Wildlife and play with some of his lapids. But anyway, uh, next. Who do you follow that you could recommend for content and information? That's tough. That's a niche I'm trying to fill on YouTube is I like to sit at work welding and listen on my headphones information and just try to learn as much as I can. I listen to Gary Vaynerchuk a lot. Very interesting guy. It has nothing to do with reptiles, uh, but I love his little mantra. Um, Nick from Wicked Wildlife in Australia, he is great for information. He's one of the best and I'm friends with him so maybe I'm just saying that because I'm his friend but I listen to all his videos multiple times. He always teaches me something I didn't know. Um, not only that, there's uh, Romulus Whitaker is, is a huge, like he's just awesome. Awesome guy from India. He's originally from America, moved over there so I can understand him very well and he knows more about King Cobras than pretty much anybody but he doesn't put out videos that often. Uh, Soham from Marta's Croc Bank, but he doesn't go real in depth on his videos, but he's a very interesting guy. Those are a few. I, I can't find that many good videos on information, so it's kind of something I'm trying to fill, trying to help you guys out with that as much as I can, even though I'm not always right. Uh, next question. Uh, could you do a walkthrough of your reptile room, get a quick glimpse into each enclosure? I could try, but that is a logistic nightmare. I want everything to be picturesque at all times. I want to want you to see an enclosure and it just be perfect. But these are living, breathing animals. The second I get done putting a clean water dish in there, they decide to poop in it. You know what happens every time. Um, they poop all along the side of the glass just, just to make my life miserable. So in order for me to go through, clean out every cage, make sure everything's spotless the way I want it to be for a video, it's very tough. You know, very tough. Uh, I just don't see that it's possible. Not only that, I don't have a cameraman to walk along behind me, so it's moving a tripod from cage to cage. It would take days. The editing alone would just kill me. So I've never done it, never even pondered doing it. Uh, if I get a cameraman, yes, I, I will try my best. But that's, that's a little ways out. I have a friend that's willing to do it, but he's in Korea right now. So once he gets back from Korea, I'll think about that video. Uh, Favorite Aussie animal? Uh, saltwater crocodile? Red belly black snake? Um, inland taipan? Not sure. That's a very hard question. Shingleback skink? Those are cool. All those are just awesome. <laughs> I mean, they just, they're great. Uh, missed one question from you. Do you have any long term or short term goals regarding animals? Um, those setups are amazing. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, I hope to make an impact on YouTube. 
I hope to reach enough people. I don't know if this is answering your question. Maybe this is off touch subject, but I'm really hoping to reach more people. You know, I really don't care about the numbers. If 5 million people see this video, that's cool. If I impact 500 people, that's way better. You know, um, I like getting the numbers just because I feel like I've reached a farther range of people, but it really doesn't matter. I would much rather impact a select few than to reach the masses. Um, but one day, the ultimate goal is to reach the masses. With snakes aren't bad, snakes are cool. Just because I talk about venomous snakes and I say that they're dangerous, the reason I say that is because I don't want anybody to get hurt. You know, in all actuality, I think that we can live alongside these creatures perfectly fine. You know, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Um, that's about it from him. Nope, never mind. Can you do a quick catalog on every animal in the personal collection? I'm actually working on that. If you see, like I did a rattlesnake video, I did a bushmaster video, I did a squamager video. I'm just kind of working through the animals. I've got a lot to go. I'm not even halfway there. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of working on it. Because I would like to catalog everything that I work with, just in case if I'm not working with that species anymore, I can still look back and be like, I told you I worked with a lowlands viper. You know, that video's coming too. Um, what is the most expensive animal you have kept personally? That's a hard one. We're just going to say the black headed Bushmaster at five grand. Um, yeah, kind of is what it is. It's, it's an expensive animal, for sure. Uh, what's your personal opinion on the most dangerous snake, both in the wild and in captivity? All things considering, uh, big black mamba, very dangerous, very dangerous animal. It's faster than you. It's faster than you can see, and you might not fully understand that. I do fully understand that. I've, I've had a Jameson's mamba come out past me, and uh, at that exact moment, I realized that wasn't the fastest thing in the room. Um, that was one of those things, do I, uh, what do I do? <laughs> this thing is much quicker than me. So uh, that's a dangerous animal. I mean, they can kill you in 15 minutes, you know, drop you. I mean, people die from black mamba bites. Even people who have the anti-venom die. So that's a serious animal. A big bothrops, eight foot bothrops, that's the strike span on that animal, the speed in which that animal moves. When it gets fired up, there ain't nothing. You've seen what happened when I put the barnet eye on this table. Can you imagine him at eight foot? like striking four foot every time. That's longer than the hook that I had. Just just a nightmare to handle. Natalie Turnbull, I do believe. Probably getting that wrong. Yet again, sorry. Uh, question, what's the most difficult in the reptile collection to handle? Uh, probably always the biggest, just strike span wise. Uh, King Cobra's pretty, pretty big handful at times. Um, Probably the uh, Bushmasters for sure, uh, Brutus the Croc, uh, the Barnett Eye is a handful. Uh, the last snake in my Flying Viper series is going to be a handful. Uh, which reptile in your collection have you had the longest? As of right now, my Doom Rolls Boa, I've had the longest. He's not the oldest, but I have had him the longest. He's uh, I got him when I was 15 years old, and I'm now 30, so I've had him right at 15 years. And when I got him, he was covered in mites and looked like crap. But now he's doing great, so I'm happy about that. He's got old man snake face, even though it's being an old, old woman snake face, I guess it would be all wrinkly and stuff. Just an old snake. But uh, do you believe you have a bond with your reptiles? Yes. Uh, people are like, they, they don't have the capability. Yeah, they do. They're very intelligent. Do I believe I can reach into an enclosure and not get bit? Maybe. Why? You know? <laughs> what's, what's the point? That's just showing off. You know, um, there's certain snakes, yeah, I could probably reach in there and not get bit, but why, yet again? Um, I definitely think so, because if I walk into the room of rattlesnakes, they don't rattle. They just look at me, they're like, food guy? What's up, bro? You got anything for me? If if someone else walks in that they don't know, they just rattle the whole time, cocked back, ready to go. You know, when I sit them out here on the table, they might see tent, seem tense, because they don't know if I'm trying to kill them, if I'm going to eat them. They don't know what's going on. But, uh... Yeah, I believe that they, they understand. These are all the same person asking these questions. That's why I'm not reading you off another name. What are your two dream reptiles you do not currently have? Yet again, Gold Street Cobra. That'd be an amazing snake. I'd have to have a pair if I had them, and I would really like to be able to keep them alive. There have been some that's been imported, but they were in horrible condition when they came in. Um, that would be right up there. Um, hmm. I don't know. Eric Smith Eye, Cordless Eric Smith Eye would be a cool rattlesnake. I don't think legally I could keep that though. I don't, I, I don't know. It's from Mexico. I don't think they export much. Uh, so, I mean, I guess if I got it legally, that'd be really cool. 
Um, the spider-tailed vipers from Iran, those would be really cool. That'd be way up there on the list. A gharial, you know, if I legally obtained that, a gharial, that'd be neat. You know, I, I don't have the permits, I don't have the licensing. A Komodo dragon, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be real cool. Um, so yeah, something like that. Uh, which reptiles would you like to see in the wild? Gharial would be up there. Gold Street Cobra would be up there. Uh, just the rarer, the better in my opinion. You know, uh, the Irene uh, spider tail viper, if I didn't get blown up or something, you know, that's a very dangerous part of the world or can be. Um, so yeah, that's a little sketchy. Not too worried about the viper, worried about people. I don't trust people, I trust vipers. What's the hardest part of reptile keeping for you? Um, death, death is horrible. Anything that lives dies. And it's very tough to see an animal that you've raised up uh, become old, become sick, and you can bust butt trying your best to get it better and it doesn't come back. You know, it's the hardest thing to have something that you've raised die inside your hands. It's just, it's tough, very tough. Okay, boosted CTR. Hey, Venom Man, are you friends with Tim Freed? I am not friends with Tim Freed. Like, he's a cool guy. I'm sure he's a cool guy. I don't know him is the problem. Uh, I think we're friends on Facebook, but I don't, like, I think we've talked once and it was very limited. So uh, if I ever mention him in some of my videos, I don't really know him. Uh, Pamela Pinnock, do you have to have a permit to own a Gila monster? Uh, no, you do not, and not in many areas. In some areas, yes, you gotta check your local laws. I don't have to have one. Um, if you're within their native range, yeah, you probably do. Um, as far as like, a lot of people that write the laws don't know anything about reptiles. So they see it as a non-life threatening reptile, so they keep it off the list of stuff that you can't have. With that being said, a lot of rear fang colubrids aren't on most venomous list of stuff that you can't have, even though like boom slings are very toxic rear fang colubrid. Uh, they will kill you. So the people who write laws don't know anything about snakes. Uh, Zippy0099, please talk about the stiletto snake. I actually have a video on the stiletto snake. That's why I came back to YouTube. That video did very well when they discovered a new species of stiletto snake. Within a month's time, I got 300,000 views on that video and really just kind of showed me that I should try to get more information out there because that was pretty awesome. So I will put a link in the description of this video to that video. So I do believe this is the last question. Virginia B asked, which species do you breed and why? So for me, it's all about breeding rarity, not because of money issues. It's mainly about like the black-headed Bushmasters is a goal. They're all still a little too young, or like the Jamaican Boas, yet again, still all a little too young. So times are coming, just not quite yet. In my opinion, they have a very limited range, very small range. If something happens to that wild stock, that wild population, and they get wiped out, we need to have a captive, you know, uh, a captive supply just to still showcase the species. You know, if, uh, it's very hard to re-release an animal back into the wild after it's been in captivity. You know, you have diseases that go through captive collection, like different types of uh, uh, crypto or uh, mycoplasm, it just all sorts of stuff that can go through and wipe out the wild population. So therefore, re-releasing ain't necessarily a viable option. But to put these animals, keep them in captivity and keep them into different locations, different collections, if all heck breaks loose out into the wild, we still, here's what a Jamaican boa looks like. This is a Jamaican boa. They used to live on the island of Jamaica. Now they're only found in captivity. You know, it's the next best thing. Um, I'm not saying that anything horrible is gonna happen, but what if it does? My opinion is it's better to have them in captivity than not to have them at all. So anyway, that's why, that's what I'm into. That's, that's my passion. And to bring you guys content, I wanna share as much knowledge as I can because in my opinion, if I learn everything about reptiles, but I share it to no one, when I die, the knowledge dies with me. So that's what this channel's about. I do appreciate you checking out this video. Next weekend, I will post another one if this one gets close to 200 likes. I just want to know that you're enjoying the video. Leave your questions in the comments. I will get to them. I will give you a shout out on the YouTube video. And uh, as always, appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend.